A few days ago, I published an article explaining my master plan for Obsidian. Everything I share there helps make sense of what I share here on the channel. But I'm not sure how many of you read the article, so I decided to publish a video and explain everything I explained on that article. Uh, everything started with this guy here, but I'm getting way ahead of myself here. Let's go back to a more recent past when I started using, uh, the, the correct word is trying sync thing to produce a video here on the channel. The idea back then was to, at the same time, try, test, sync thing, and also share a how-to video with you. But sync thing revealed itself as something very powerful, and I started using it for other things. I have already mentioned this, but I use it with my pictures. I have a system that synchronizes that brings the pictures from my phone. Every time I take a picture on my phone, that picture goes to Google Photos. I use Google Photos, but it also synchronizes with my computer and goes to a folder on my computer. The video where I show that, I, I, I created an automation to send the pictures to Apple Photos, but I later found out that Apple Photos was kind of doubling the space used. So I ditched that and I now use only the folder system and, and I have all the pictures there. So I have it on Google Photos and also a backup on my computer. In fact, I have two backups. It goes to both of my computers. Sync thing sends a copy to the Mac Mini that stays on 24 seven on my office and my laptop has also, uh, receives also a copy of those pictures. And both the computers have uh, a, a time machine connected, so they are constantly being backed up. And by the way, I also published a video when I discovered that situation, Apple doubling the size of the files. That doesn't make sense. Maybe it was something that only happened here, but I'm sure it happened because I compared the size of the, 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 the files. And it's crazy to think that I'm backing up my pictures on iCloud, and I'm, to do that, I have to use double the space that I would use keeping the pictures inside a folder structure. And that means that we need uh, more space, more storage space on our computers, on our Macs, and also more online storage space. So Apple is winning on both. You're paying more just because you're using their hardware and their services. So um, that made me start thinking about all this situation. Why do I need that? It's not, it's not only, be, it's not really because I'm paying for it. Of course, I don't want to waste money, but that's not fair. And again, I, I'm not sure if that's, that was something that only happened here, but it happened. So. Maybe you should check there and watch the video and check your situation there. So all this and the fact that I still use this device here, I still synchronize my music with this device. And by the way, iTunes doesn't double the size of the music. It's the same size. The, 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 the database it doesn't, doesn't make, <laughs> doesn't create this crazy situation of doubling the space that we need to store. Uh, the digital goods. So because I'm using this and because of the situation with the pictures, I thought maybe I should be the one taking care of everything that I'm synchronizing. And if you start to think about it, the cloud is not really that safe. And I'm not talking about privacy or any of that, which is also important. I'm talking about what if Apple doubles the price? What if Google doubles the price? What if Google decide not to have Google Photos anymore? What if Apple creates some kind of situation where uh, Apple Photos is integrated to something that you don't want to use? It's not really safe because you never know what's going to happen. And having everything taken care by you, it's, it, it's kind of bringing the control back to your hand. It's a, a lot of work, to be honest, but Doing it, if I if if you do it gradually, you can get there. And sync thing is playing a, a very big part here because I can use it to synchronize everything. 
And Obsidian, here comes the master plan. Because I'm already synchronizing Obsidian, and because Obsidian uses basically uses the file system, the file structure that you select, the vault is just a folder on your computer, I thought maybe if I put everything inside the vault, it's a better solution because the vault is already being synchronized, so everything's gonna be synchronized. I don't need to use that, uh, inside Obsidian, but uh, it's there. For example, all the the images, sounds, and everything I use for my videos, the production, there is a video production folder inside my static container in Obsidian. If you don't know what a static container is, go check my videos about the timeline system. So it's already there, and I can use that from any computer and even my phone. All my avatars, all the images I use on social media are also inside a static container. So everything is accessible from any computer and I can even use it inside Obsidian if I, I need to. I never need to use those things inside Obsidian, but it's there. And then I, I, I moved a step further. Why should I keep my, uh, my pins, my Google Maps pins, only on Google Maps. I love Google Maps. I still use Google Maps. I use it all the time. My trips and even here, uh, places I find, interesting places I find here in Porto, everything is on Google Maps. But why only Google Maps? Again, it's a cloud. You don't know what's going to happen in the future. So I started replicating that on, Go uh, on Obsidian using the Maps plugin. And not only I have a backup, but it's beautiful. <laughs> Every time I open Obsidian, I see that map with all the pins. It's beautiful. It's so cool. And there is a video here in, on the channel about the maps plugin. By the way, all these videos, you find all the links in the description below. A long time ago, I shared a solution I created to, uh, uh, to connect Scrivener and Obsidian and use and write, take notes uh, using my Android phone. And that's also in Obsidian, of course, because I'm synchronizing both. So everything is going to Obsidian. And because I'm synchronizing everything, in the future, I will be able to have everything I use, all my digital information inside the vault, and I'll be able to access that from inside Obsidian or from any of the computers. Uh, I don't have all my pictures there yet, and the goal is to have the pic all the pictures there. I don't have it because I use Think Sync and I couldn't figure out a way to do a selective sync. And if I move all the pictures there, they will synchronize uh, with my phone and my phone doesn't have enough storage for all the pictures. But in the future, when phones are in pair with uh, computer storage, I plan to move all the files to the, to the phone. Uh, and because I'm taking care of all this, there's also another video explaining my backup solution. I have already mentioned it here, but I have backups on both sides and I have everything synchronized with both computers. So this is something that you have to be careful with because you become the manager of all that information uh, having it locally means that you have to take care of everything, including backup. So there's a, a, also another video about that. And if you want to start doing something like this, you should try that. You should watch that, that video. So I'm calling this initiative uh, the Digital Caveman Project because I feel like I am in this cave, this modern cave with all the, the structure and all the storage inside that cave. And I'm taking care of moving everything to my cave. But there's one last thing that I want to share with you. It's also in the article. I'm now trying to move uh, my passwords database to the Obsidian Vault. Uh, I'm, I'm testing KeyPass. It's working great so far. Uh, KeyPass has doesn't have a modern interface and maybe it's too much for many of you but if you are <laughs> if you want to be part of the digital caveman project sometimes 
things will have to to work like this but it's a good software and it works i needed something that would have a, a local database a single database and that i could put inside the vault so far technically speaking it's working very well i've been using it for maybe maybe more than a month now and i didn't have any problems but i moved about 20 passwords there just to in fact i copied i i i, I didn't uh, abandon my, my the other password manager i'm trying it i'm testing it and it's working very well but i'm also looking for other solutions uh, maybe there is a, a, a other alternative that will work uh, as key pass and i'll publish there's no video about that but i'll publish a video about that soon that's it for this one. If it was helpful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to help even more, please consider supporting my work on Patreon or YouTube. You can also buy me a coffee. Thanks for watching. See you soon.